Hey there YouTube, what's up? Son of Terra 92 here and you're tuned in to another Science Epic video log. Today's video will be a bit laid back. We won't be delving into any of the serious and hardcore sciences such as physics or astronomy. However, today we'll be taking a look at a topic in which I think will be equally as important and equally as interesting. Today I would like to take some time to conduct a retrospect of who we are as well as to take into examination the human condition. And I would like you guys to follow me on this journey. So without further ado, shall we begin? First of all, I'd like to share a personal experience of mine with everybody. A little over a year ago when I was still in high school, I had to take history as one of my core subjects. It was not an elective, so no matter how much I argued that none of the things I learned could potentially affect my continued survival or my future in any way, I still had to bear with taking the final exam, despite the fact that I had a much stronger interest in science and physics. So I forged on with the curriculum and learned about what the past had to offer. But being the impatient teenager that I was, always eager for results and never concerned about the process or journey in between, I never really looked at the endless list of names and dates as more than just that. An endless list of names and dates. I guess to most people this is what history is all about. A never ending series of details concerning an event that happened in a time so unrelated to right now, so unrelated to the present. I mean, the two branches of knowledge themselves couldn't be any more different from each other. Where science is the study of the laws of nature, it is a converging discipline. From multiple observations, you can wither the evidence down to its respective physical laws, concluding with a single theory. While in history, the study of the human past, you begin with a single event and then attempt to make an account of this event based on available evidence. From a single event, you might end up diverging onto multiple facts and records. In my opinion, scientists and historians couldn't be any more unlike each other when it comes to their respective methodologies. Anyway, moving along, those who pursue the field of science, empirical studies, dedicate their lives towards uncovering new laws, new rules as to how the universe works. Scientists adhere to the strictest of all possible ethics when it comes to professional discipline. When a scientist discovers a new theory, a new law of nature, they would be inclined to put this theory on the firing line before the entire scientific community, as well as to set up a challenge. Give it your best shot. If any flaws or errors are discovered, if any fatal errors are discovered in the model, then it's back to the drawing board. No compromise. Science is a self-correcting process that has its roots strongly governed by the principles of skeptical inquiry and intense scrutiny. While in the study of the humanities, such as history, research is mainly aimed at acquiring sources in which to create an archive from. The closer a source is dated to its related event, the more accurate the source is considered to be compared to those sources dated farther away. Historians have come up with their own methods of criticism and inquiry to figure out and to ensure the authenticity of a particular record. However, sometimes in history, sources can be susceptible to biased interpretations depending on who is doing the recording. Now think about the two again, science and history. Today, we live in a society influenced by both factors. When you think about the two again, there are some prevailing themes from both science and history that can be applied to everyday life, and I don't mean to exaggerate when I say those who fail to learn from the past are doomed to repeat its mistakes. Now the past has shown us that human beings are capable of creating the greatest of wonders even when posed with the most impossible of challenges and conditions. Some evidence of this still stands today. I doubt that the ancient Egyptians could have created their civilization out of the arid rock and barren dust of the desert without rapid advancements in the fields of civil engineering and ancient stone masonry techniques. I doubt that the Aztecs could have created their civilization and their pyramids out in the middle of nowhere in the jungle without a fundamental basis of knowledge in the fields of mathematics and geometry. 
Societies that become exporters of science tend to be better off than those that are net importers. As you can see from the world we live in today, science has become a domain dominated by Western countries that stand on the cutting edge of scientific research, with China and Japan lagging not too far behind. These societies have access to better infrastructure, benefit from strong economies, and are able to defend themselves accordingly. History is full of miraculous success stories of humans that define the time that they lived in. You have the early Ionian Greeks, the forerunners of the scientific method. You have the ancient Chinese with their systematic study of the heavens. And you have the medieval Arabs that cataloged a prodigious number of stars, paving the way for developments in the field of navigation. The golden age of the Islamic empire can be seen as an excellent example of a people that rose to greatness by pursuing logical and humanistic discourses in the search for knowledge. Emphasis on free speech can also be attributed to one of the factors that caused this civilization to experience prosperity. The Islamic world flourished through a liberalized society while at the time Europe languished in dark age fundamentalism. But where did these societies go? Whatever happened to them? Why is the flag planted on the moon from America and not from Athens or Corinth? Why was the first person to have ventured out into space from Russia and not from Asia, particularly China? Why, why am I speaking English right now? Why am I not speaking in Arabic? Societies can fall just as they can rise. You see, humans built this civilization hand in hand and they can easily tear down what they created with their hands apart. Any society or technical civilization is prone to the same risks of self-destruction from either internal or external factors. Modern humans are no exception. Although our buildings may get taller as generations pass or our reach may extend to ever farther corners of space as the aeons progress, Little do we take note of the game of Russian roulette we play with our technology and our predispositions for violence and anger. I've spoken a lot in my previous videos on how humans are intrinsically attracted to knowledge and understanding. We crave to make the unknown more familiar, as well as to use what we already know to improve our current standard of living. However, there lies the challenge. You see, as our affinity for technology increases exponentially as time goes by and as we continue to unlock the inner potential within us all to change the world to change the environment as we see fit the risks that come the effects that come with abusing and misusing technology become ever more severe today we live in a world of high-speed communications made possible by networked computers satellites placed right over our heads in geostationary orbit ground-based radio transmission stations and fiber optics i stress to think of how our lives would be and how the world would look like without these readily available infrastructures your facebook profile and even youtube are made possible by these technologies working in perfect harmony However, there is a dark side to these technologies. You see, those very same rockets that carried those communication satellites up into space, someday I really wish I could go there, are equally capable of sending payloads of nuclear warheads across continents. Weapons so devastating they are capable of wiping out entire cities and extinguishing thousands of lives within an instant. Playing modern warfare or World of Warcraft on your computer utilizes a technology initially conceptualized and designed during the Cold War. Radio astronomy and commercial air traffic control uses radar, a term first introduced during the Second World War as radio detection and range finding. It gave the Allies the upper hand over their enemies in the battle for air superiority. Perhaps had the Axis powers been the side to have developed that technology first, could they have been the victors of that war? Could I be speaking in Japanese right now? Could that be my culture? Could that be my history? In my opinion, the only way for our society to overcome its chauvinistic ideologies 
is for us to come together and form a single unified collective. I think that if we are to survive, our loyalties must be expanded to include that of the entire human race, a community that would encompass all of planet Earth. Sort of like the Federation in Gundam or in Star Trek, or if Star Wars is more of your thing, then sort of like the Galactic Republic in Star Wars, you get the idea. However, this is just an opinion, and if you guys have any differing ideas as to how we can achieve long-lasting and holistic peace, please do enlighten me in the comment section down below. I would be delighted to hear what you guys have to say about this. In conclusion, both science and history represent humanity's ability to make knowledge accessible for future generations. By pursuing these processes, we are taking steps to ensure our continued survival. I would like to end today's video with the very last line from Carl Sagan's Cosmos, which goes, Our obligation to survive is owed not just to ourselves, but to that cosmos, ancient and vast, from which we spring. That's all for today's video, Son of Terra 92, signing off. Join me next time as we explore the world of chemistry in a new series I will be introducing called The Melodies of Life, here on Science Epic. Thanks for watching folks, leave your comments and ideas in the section down below. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.